Hey there, looks like I'm live. Woohoo! How's everybody doing? Um, this is Dawn Montefusco. I'm a transformational writing coach and a story editor. Uh, I've added story editing to my blossoming career because I absolutely love story editing. I didn't even know I was doing story editing until I started working with enough people and someone said, oh my gosh, you're like a serious story editor. And I was like, oh, so then everybody know how to write awesome stories if they're a writing coach. And I, I'm assuming they many people who are in this industry are. However, it's one of my greatest, greatest gifts and talents and something I love, love, love to do. So if you're out there and you know anyone who is stuck in their story, um, it could be for marketing, it could be for a book, it could be for a film, it could be for business in terms of really understanding and putting the pieces together on what message you want to get out there and how to get that message to gel. Um, I'm the woman for you. So feel free to reach out to me for story editing anytime. And of course, I'm a writer, I'm, I am a writer, and I help people get through resistance. So one of the things, a lot of you know this already, but uh, I help people break through resistance. Resistance comes in all kinds of forms. And that's why we're talking about how long should it take, should it take to write a book? Before I do, I want to make sure that we are all, uh, we can hear each other, we can see each other. I mean, I'm going to grab um, a couple of places where I know. Looks like I'm on. I'm there. I just want to make sure that things are rolling, rolling, rolling in other areas. Excellent. Okay. So somebody's on there. I can see you. If you can hear me or see me or both, hopefully. Uh, hey, Tori, you can hear and see me. Yoo -hoo -hoo. We are on like Donkey Kong. So I hope you all had an amazing Thanksgiving, especially during the times that we have been through. I think that, oh, I don't know about you, but I am just so grateful for everything. And yet I am so sad about everything. It, it's kind of a bizarre feeling. So I do want to, I don't know, just, just empathize and more than empathy. I just want you all to have compassion for yourselves. I really think as writers, we are sensitive. I think as artists, we are sensitive. Um, as business owners who are artists, by the way, they're creating, they're sensitive. So I think this whole idea of creating, um, but I think writing is a very unique, uh, it's a very unique skill set where we're really looking to write the details. We want to get into the emotions and we see things and hear things and read things and notice things and can get really, 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 you know, hit by it. And at the same time, the reverse is we see things, we notice things, we, the little bits can be so beautiful, right? As a writer, I mean, as an artist in general, but I'm going to just talk writing here. Cause I think to some degree, like when I see a hummingbird, which I've seen tons of them here in, in Oceanside, I'm actually up in Oceanside. Um, part of me goes, how do I describe that? That's so amazing. You know? So I want to say that it has not been an easy uh, last couple of years for anybody around the world. Um, but I also want to say that we cannot hold fear and gratitude at the same time in the mind. Tony Robbins talks about this all the time. So we're dealing with a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, a lot of depression, so much is going on. But remember that, you know, I know that there's a whole thing about like Thanksgiving is a terrible time because Columbus came in and killed all the Indians or whatever the old story is. It doesn't matter anymore. Okay. That stuff, we can't, we cannot sit in the past and whine about it now. And I don't, I'm, I'm, I might make a few uh, people angry here, but here's the thing. Gratitude is always welcome. If it has morphed, if the whole thing has morphed, and mutated into a transformation where we have gratitude, at least in America, on Thanksgiving, then that is a fantastic, fantastic transformation. So I do hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I have never been in more gratitude in my life, simply for being, uh, taking on a really strong challenge and about moving, which I am going to get you a whole, I've been taking notes and writing it down. You, you If you're on my email list, you're going to get an awesome uh, written email story, but I'm also going to put it on Medium on my blog and 
talk about it in a, in a video because it's pretty miraculous how I followed the steps that, uh, you know, we hear about all the time. And it was pretty amazing how it all unfolded. So let's talk about the book. Um, my book is on its final, 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 final review. And I just got to get it back to my editor uh, with my final. I have to read it out loud. And it's about 102 pages formatted in soft cover, but it's about 60 pages for Kindle. Uh, and I've got to read it all out loud one last time. I've approved the cover. I've approved everything. And the goal is to have it out in the beginning of the year, cracking the resistance code, how to break through the fear of uncertainty and write your book. So along with that, I had to figure out how long should it take to write a book? And I say should in quotes. I had an entire um, series called the Ultimate Writing Series, and it was 2021 20, bestselling, New York Times bestselling writers, as well as bestselling um, entrepreneurs, uh, bestselling artists, poets, you name it. We are in the process of moving all of that, those series that I was, that, you know, used to be like $97 for the, for the series or $47. We're moving all of my interviews for free onto YouTube. Uh, this month. And so I will be referring to them and sending out links and emails. So you can see it's kind of like my, my podcast for the last five years, some of the most amazing writers, uh, creators and artists around the world. Uh, Gay Hendricks, Andrew Harvey, Tama Keeves. Um, oh, there's just so many. Uh, Kevin Knebel, who's the number one speaker for LinkedIn, uh, who wrote a book in three days. And I asked them all, how long do you think it should take to write a book or how long did it take for you to write a book? Now, it's really funny when you see the reactions because for instance, Kevin Knievel, who's awesome and he said it publicly and you'll see it. Uh, <laughs> he made a joke and he said, well, you know, I've been, the, he's like the man, he's the, 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 the highest, he's the goat. He's the, the uh, greatest of all time presenter and speaker for LinkedIn. He goes all around the world. He works with all Fortune 500 companies and how to utilize LinkedIn. And he's been, you know, doing coaching on it and consulting on it. So I forget, forget, I may have been Random House. Somebody came to him and said, hey, we'll give you, you know, $20,000, $30,000 advance. And would you write a book about this? Because you, you're the guy. And he said, sure, thanks. I would love to. But he hadn't written a book before. And he admits in the video that he waited until the, the, the drop dead deadline of getting the book into the editor. And they were asking, like, where is this book? And so he had to rent a hotel room, uh, go into the hotel room for like four days, and he just pumped out this book. And granted, it's a first draft, right? It's a real intense first draft that, now think about this, that he had been thinking about for three months. So he was writing, just not typing or just not talking into it, however he did it. Um, so there's a, there's a course of simmering and then there can be a pop. And in his case, he had to pop because these publishing companies were not, <laughs> well, the publishing company would have been disappointed as well as he would have been disappointed. So there's that aspect of writing a book. There's also the aspect of people when I spoke to them and asked them, these best-selling writers, like I said, these are people who have accomplished quite a bit. When I asked in writing, when I asked, it was funny because they all said about the same thing. They said, well, if you take the amount of time that I actually sat down to write, you know, even including some of the times that I sat down to just organize it, probably no one should go past 90 days. It shouldn't take 90 days, maybe at a max six months. You know, six months seemed to be the, the place people were falling upon, but they included in it that they took two years because they kept procrastinating. They kept putting it off. They kept, you know, not making it a priority, right? And I can attest to that. Uh, cracking the resistance code. I've been talking about that for years. And then finally, I was like, oh my gosh, first I need help. And then I went to a book coach, uh, who's an, also an editor, and she helped me flush things out. I did 80,000 words and I wanted a 18,000 word book. So we had to get rid of a lot. Turns out I was writing like three different books. Why? Because I really didn't have the proper coaching, even the writing coach, on what am I really trying to say? So first of all, 
you really have to get organized. What are you really trying to say? What is it that you want to produce? Then how long do you want your book to be? So I wanted it to be a short book, even though I had made it a long book by accident. And I'll tell you what, writing a book about resistance, God knows how to, how to really make you write a really good book. Okay, looks like I'm back. Apologize for everybody. There was a, I'm assuming there was a bump <laughs> in there. It just went, said, sorry, we can't connect. Uh, so I am the queen. Of
Okay. I closed out of everything and tried to see if it rebooted. So let's keep going. So say you want a book that's 200 pages and you want it done within six months. So you would just say, okay, what's the date from today, six months down the road? And then you would reverse engineer. So you would say, okay, this is how many um, pages that I need to, uh, hold on, let's look. So 200 pages, I didn't even do this, 200 divided by six, that's 33 pages a month. And then if it's 33 pages a month, divide that by four, that's eight pages a week. That's doable. And then if you want to do uh, eight pages a week, you can divide that up in any way you want. You can do eight pages the first part of the week, eight pages the last part of the week, eight pages over the weekend. Uh, so you just reverse engineer with math. I recommend you go four months and then hit your goal within four months. Now, how do you hit your goal in four months? You have to have an accountability buddy. There's no way around it. Writers who write together thrive together. So you either have an accountability buddy, you have a coach, you have a mentor, you have a buddy who's who or a group, a writing group. And you really want to be careful with writing groups that you have the right uh, leader and that you get the proper feedback. So you don't want to have an accountability buddy who's working on her garden and you're, you're she's going to work in her garden and you're going to write. There's not a lot of feedback loop there. You want to try to find someone who wants to write with you. They can write anything. They can be like, I want to write a blog, but you want to write a book. Doesn't matter. You just have a goal that you want to hit. And the best feedback you can give each other is, yay, you, you celebrate. You have to have a celebration that you hit your goal that week. And if you didn't hit your goal that week, you have that compassion that I was talking about. And I have a breakthrough resistance training. And if you're interested in it, let me know. And I will put the link down here or email it to you personally. Um, and for those that are on this particular uh, live, I'll even give you the Black Friday special. I think it was something. And so three day, three video um, breakthrough resistance training. And it's awesome. And even I use it when I'm feeling like, hmm, I'm feeling a little bit, uh, you know, wacky. And it's courage, consistency, and compassion. I talk about the courage to show up, the consistency to show up, but more than that, the compassion for when you don't. So if you have an accountability buddy, you want to be able to say to your buddy who says, no, I didn't write this week, even if it's ongoing, I didn't write this week either. It's not, you know, uh, well, why didn't, don't say why, what happened? So we want to train our brain, specifically when you're trying to write a book within six months and you find yourself getting stalled. What is hap What happened that I didn't write yesterday? And keep a little journal. How is it? Use the words what and how. How is it that I didn't write yesterday? And for me, I'll, tell, I'll be completely honest. I am, I hate when people say that. I'll be completely honest. <laughs> I'm going to lie to you. <laughs> anyway, um, I have an Instagram account. That's my InstaPoet account. It's where I put my spoken word, my poetry, and some fun pictures. It's kind of like my personal art page. I am not, I haven't written a poem. I've written some poetry, but I haven't uploaded a poem all of November because I moved. So instead of me going, God, you suck so bad. You're not, you know, your fans want your poetry. You're gaining more fans. I say, what is it that's happening? What is it that's happening that I just keep forgetting to write poetry? And I'm like, oh, duh, you just moved after 21 years. Or it could be something simple. Oh, I haven't been getting enough sleep. Oh, my aunt stopped fire. Oh, my dog needed um, to go to the vet. You know, what happened that distracted you from reaching your goal? And what that does is it gives you some microscopic clarity on what's going on in your life without you blaming yourself with the word why. Why is a shameful, defensive word. Why didn't you blah, blah, blah. When I worked with at-risk youth, and they were tough, right? We're talking kids on probation and gangs. And I worked with them to help them get through high school and then get their AA degree. And I was very successful doing it. It's a program now called Gateway to College. We got $10 million grant from Bill Gates to replicate the program all over the country. And I had the honor of being one of the founding members and one of the creators. And one of the things that I learned through um, coaching and professional development is never to use the word why. Now, that makes sense. Uh, kid, uh, one of my students comes in late and that was a big no-no. And I, instead of saying, why are you late? I would say, hey, Kenny, so, Come here for a second. I don't want to disrupt the class. So stand outside for a second. And, go, and I would make sure the class was going because the student wasn't allowed to take the attention away. And then I would go outside once they had a little writing assignment. And I'd say, Kenny, what happened? What happened that you, 
you, you, you were late. You know, how did, how did it happen? And when I said it that way, Kenny would go, oh, well, I didn't set my alarm properly. And so I missed the bus. Okay, great. So how about um, you want to make a, a deal that maybe tomorrow you'll get on an earlier bus? Yeah, teach. Thanks. So as opposed to Kenny, why are you late? Why? Why? Because life is hard. Why? Because I, I got dealt a bad de deck of cards and my mom's an alcoholic and my dad's a drug addict and I wound up in jail. Why? There's so many whys. But that's like, you know, putting people on the defense. But you say, well, what happened? How did it happen? What can we do to fix that? It And it takes it down. And notice the tone that I use with Kenny. So you do that with yourself. You learn to talk to yourself with compassion. And that's part of the three-day breakthrough resistance training. Is but it is part of how you get your book done in six months. You, If you miss your plan, right? You have a plan. You have to have a, a, an outline. Before you have the outline, you have the, the mind mapping. And I have a whole system that I teach, you know, in some of my longer workshops. Definitely the whole system is in my One Short Book group, um, my One Short Book program. But once you have these things in order and organized, and then you got to get down to the, okay, the writing of it shouldn't be that hard. And then all of a sudden you find yourself not writing. You simply say to yourself, and you could have a little journal, what happened that I'm not writing? And then you start writing about it. And you can start to see what your resistance is, what's going on in your life. Maybe then you renegotiate the time it takes to write your book. So writing a book is, it has less to do. I mean, you can learn, I can teach anybody the skills, the talent, what makes a great story for any genre. Um, I can teach, you know, outlines and how to break things down and the best story arc and the climax and all that you can learn, right? You can learn everything, how to use more setting, more detail, dialogue. I can teach you anything. That's not the hard part about writing. The hard part about writing is getting yourself to sit down and write a shitty first draft. Anne Lamott, famous writer, she dubbed the term the shitty first draft. Some people call it the sloppy first copy. And more than that, it's just to sit down and do the writing. And more than that, it's to have compassion with yourself and ask yourself simple, gentle questions. What is it that's getting in my way? What, what am I telling myself that's that's making me not write. I don't know how to write. I use that one. I use that. I don't know how to write this. I, that, that's the first thing I think every single time I sit down to write a poem. I'm not exaggerating. Literally, 100%, 10 out of 10 times that I sit down and go, God, I really want to write a poem because I know it feels good to have written, but I want to be able <laughs> uh, to, to write it. And I go, I don't know what I'm doing. Why do I even think I can do this? And then I say, oh, yeah, yeah, there's some evidence that I can do this. Okay, so I'm using the excuse I don't know how to do this. Hmm. Well, what's happening that I'm doing that? Okay, I'm feeling a little insecure. Okay, great. Well, how about you write it wrong? And this is what I tell myself and I tell my clients and I tell students and I've done this all my life. I want to write it wrong. Oh, okay. I'm going to write this wrong. So I think about a topic. I might open a book and turn to a page and look look at some idea and say, oh, okay, I'm going to write about um, lying on a pool like that. What would, what would that poem look like? You know, I just have different pictures and that's for poetry, you know? So, so that's my thing is I do need some kind of container, something that I'm going to point to, to write about. They say, you know, if you say it, have a blank page and says, just go write, that's terrifying. But when a writer has the prompt, write about a strawberry, we can do that. So you want to know what you're writing about, right? What are you really trying to say? What do you want the reader to walk away with? What has been burning in you? Or what do you want to play with? What subject do you want to play with? How long do you want it to be? Break it down from six months. I say four months because that gives you an extra two months. And then what maybe um, are you going to do with it afterwards? So we've got the compassion. So we've, we've covered courage in this. We've covered consistency in this. And we've covered compassion. So I have a whole three-day training where I spend three different videos on that. The compassion one, remember, is the most important. Going easy on yourself. Then, as you get into finishing the book, what do you want to happen next? Do you want um, an author central page on Amazon, which is one of the, the, the it's the third 
uh, most used search engine in the world to find podcast interviews. They're looking for people with content, right? So you can get you get all kinds of opportunities. Do you want that? Do you want to try to get an agent? Maybe you have a platform that's big and you you think maybe I could pull this off. Maybe I can get an agent. Okay. Um, do you want to just sit, let it sit? So you don't have to write your book in six months and then do something huge. I think that scares people so much. I mean, I know that it's, it would, I have had much fear of success. And once you get past fear of success, you're like, I can't believe I was afraid of that. Um, it's not fear of failure. Remember, most of the time we're afraid of the success it's going to bring us because failure just means everything stays the same. Failure is the mother of success. However, sometimes failure just means you get to say, I tried. Sorry. Um, it's the success we're afraid of. So sometimes it's great to just sit on it for a minute. And I did that before I, before I hired my publishing coach, before I hired the right person, she has a whole package that she does editing and proofing and the design. And I knew, you know, I, I did my research and, um, her name is Shanda Trofe. If you're interested, I work with her. Uh, and that's Shanda S H A N D A last name T R O F E. And then it's.com. So you can go look at her packages. She's, she's phenomenal. But when I was ready, I went to her, I just sat on it for a little bit for a couple of months. I just sat on it and I looked at it a little bit and I changed a couple of things around. And then I was like, you know what? My life coach was like, you got to send it. You know, is that your goal? Send it out. So I did. And now here we are. It's going to be in all forms, audio, soft cover and Kindle short read. But that took a little time. So writing the book should never take more than six months. What you do with the book, you will discover as you write it and as you finish it. If you find yourself having trouble with it, always get an accountability buddy, hire a mentor, take a workshop, uh, a coach, look for help, ask for help because writers who write together thrive together. And lastly, if you know anyone who tells you that no one's going to read your book, if you have family members that you know are going to say, well, who's going to want to read your memoir or who's going to want to read your book? I want you to get away from them. They obviously don't know the landscape of writing right now. Writers have the upper hand. Your book will be read. There's 8 billion people in the world. There is an audience for everyone. And people are looking for new content to pop up in Kindle, in Amazon, in all the books, any given minute. So you will have an audience. So if anyone says, who will read your book? You will say, my audience will. I guarantee you, you will have an audience. And that might scare you a little. But have a little compassion for yourself. Understand that we all go through this. We all have fears. And uh, you can do it just like everybody else can. Hold on, I'm trying to see. Wait, hold on. Any... Now that everything seems to be working. <laughs> and I apologize. Oh, Carla, yay, thank you for the hearts. I appreciate that so much. People are always so quiet. I can see that there's people on here, but so people are so quiet about engaging. Let's see what else is on here. Hopefully this worked out for people and um, the, uh, the glitches, I'm hoping that Restream kind of pushed them together so that the final version of this, the replay, uh, isn't so stuck. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, everybody. If you have any questions or you have any suggestions for uh, the, for my show, if you have any suggestions or questions, we're now gathering all of them for subject matter as we go into the new year. If it's very specific questions on publishing or on details or on dialogue, I love teaching the dialogue class. I can teach that over and over and over. There's no lack of, of need for hearing things again. Um, or you're wondering about a specific genre or you're wondering about a specific something in marketing um, or what books are doing well um, or how do you get your foot in the door in certain places, please email me at donmonafusco uh, at gmail.com. And or you can message me here on Facebook or on LinkedIn 
or on YouTube because <laughs> I'm all over the place and I will be collecting uh, questions. And if you're in my one short book group, I will see you tomorrow at 11 a.m. because I do a live Q&A for everybody that's in the one short book group uh, three times a week and we get a lot of work done in that. So if you're interested in the one short book group, uh, let me know that as well and I can turn you uh, to that uh, direction. <laughs> I'm all like stumbly right now. All right, everybody. It's really great to see you. I'll see you next week and mwah, have a good one.